In this first episode, we're going to be going over the squat, in particular the resting squat. We will be going over the what, why, when, where, and how. So squat down and join me for a video on the squat. Let's start out with the what. What is the resting squat? In a resting squat, as you can see, we fully flex the knee, the hip, we dorsiflex the ankle, and we have some flexion of the spine. We are not taking any excess load like a back squat or a front squat, so having some rounding of the spine going into posterior pelvic tilt is not a problem here. If we were taking high loads, then I'd want to keep a neutral spine and have a bit of anterior pelvic tilt, but not a problem for the resting squat. Now onto the how. How should we perform the resting squat? Beyond the details of compressing the body down and keeping the heel down, actually the answer to this question is there are a lot of different varieties and a lot of different ways that you can perform the resting squat. You can have the feet facing forward or facing out. The feet can be placed wide, shoulder width or close. You can have your shoes on or take your shoes off. There will be a more efficient squat for your own body. For example, I feel the most comfortable with a shoulder width squat and my feet pointing slightly out, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't benefit from squatting with my feet forward or a wider or more narrow stance. It is all great and it all should be developed. Now, what should you do if you cannot squat? The heels won't stay down, you can't compress, what should you do? If you are immobile in the spine, the ankle, the knees, the hip, you might have problems here. But we do have an answer, a very simple one. The easiest and best answer is to simply elevate the heel. You can use something natural like a crack in the ground or something artificial like a book or a towel. Use something just high enough where you can stay in the squat for about one to two minutes. If you're falling out before 30 seconds is up, you are using a height that is too challenging for you. And if you're holding comfortably for three minutes or more, you are using a height that is too easy. Slowly work your way down in elevation until you can perform these on the floor. Here in China, squatting is quite normal. You will see it used daily, very naturally. Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you're young or old, you're rich or poor, you will use the squat in daily life. Now, why do they use the squat? Well, maybe they are just waiting for the bus or the subway. Maybe they're smoking a cigarette. Maybe they're talking with friends. Some toilets here in China are squatting toilets, so you need to squat at times to use them. Or maybe they're simply just picking something off the ground they squat down to pick it up. Because it's in the culture, because it's a habit, because moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas use it, naturally people are going to use it as well. I have not traveled to many countries, but I have been to places like South Korea, the Philippines, and Malaysia, where I see the very similar thing of squatting in very natural ways throughout the day in different circumstances. However, over in the West, in particular in America, where I come from, I don't see the squat very often, and if I asked people to squat, they probably couldn't do it. Now, is this a difference in genetics, or is this a difference in Western people can't squat and Asian people can? Not at all. Now, there might be some genetic reasons why you're less mobile here or less mobile there, but in general, most people can learn how to squat again. Actually, we all knew how to squat at some point because squatting is actually a step to standing. You look in your photo books, you will find a picture of you squatting, if your mom liked to take pictures. Because it's not used, we lose it. Now, can it be reg regained? For most people, yes. I have actually not come in contact with anyone that cannot regain the squat. Now, just because I haven't come in contact with it doesn't mean that they don't exist. There are probably people out there that cannot learn how to resting squat here, but just going through a process and trying to learn can be very beneficial even if you never hit that end result. So I think in America here, the main reason people don't squat is because culturally we don't squat. When I was younger, my mom didn't squat to pick up things or, or rest in there, so I simply didn't do it and copy her when I was young and then I didn't continue when I was older. None of my friends really squatted, none of my teachers really squatted, so I didn't really use it. Actually, when I've squatted back in America, some people thought it was impolite or rude or a little bit savage looking. So these pressures can make us not want to do it, you know? But it's a very important thing. Don't allow what people think of you to, to dictate what you actually do. If something's gonna benefit you, do it whether someone likes it or not. I myself lost my squat when I was younger and I had to regain it when I was an adult. How did I regain it? The first thing that I did is I went through Ido Portel's 30-30 squat challenge. If you are unfamiliar with this challenge, I will put the link in the description of this video. I highly recommend you go to the link and check out the description because a lot of people actually go through this challenge incorrectly. It is 30 days of 30 minutes of squatting, but that does not mean you sit in the squat for 30 minutes in one go. That means you do a minute here, two minutes here, 30 seconds there, and accumulate throughout the day. You want to develop a habit of getting down into a squat and not simply trying to get it done as fast as possible all in the morning. 
We want a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, a little bit in the evening. That way we are mobile throughout the day and not just in one part. So if you are interested in that and you've never done it, even if you have done it, do it again. Click the link, go to the 30-30 squat challenge. You will thank your knees, your body later. Now let's get into the why. Why should we get into the resting squat often? The first reason is it can relieve some of the pain that we're having, whether it's in the ankle, the knee, the hip, the spine, really the entire body. Throughout the day, we are mostly in an extended position when we are standing or we're in a half compressed position where we're sitting, the knees are at 90 degrees. We're not really challenging the compression of the body. I myself have had this. I've actually had two surgeries on this left knee and an injury to the right knee. Uh, most of this was before I learned how to squat. After I learned how to squat, now I have no problems with the knee, even though surgically this knee has been repaired and this knee has been damaged in the ACL in the past. The second reason we should learn how to squat is learning to squat opens many doors in your day-to-day -day life. Now when you get tired of standing, you can simply squat down. You no longer have trouble picking up your son. You no longer have trouble getting off of the floor. It's all very valuable for your life. Now here is an exercise you can use to work on the mobility on the bottom position. This is a great progression if you can squat with the heels on the floor, but it is not yet comfortable. Start with the heels elevated, take the arms out in front of you and use them for counterbalance. Slowly touch the heels to the ground, then come back onto the toes and perform these for 10 reps with a 10 second pause on the last rep with the heels up and with the heels down. If this is easy, you can take the hands away and put them behind your back for an added challenge. Some common mistakes to avoid, show full control in all ranges. Do not allow the heels to slam onto the ground. Do not use momentum to come back up to your toes. You should have full control at all times. If this is too challenging, you may elevate the heels slightly and still get good benefit here. What if you have an injury or you lack strength to squat up or squat down? In this case, there are many different ways we can work on this. One way I recommend is to hold on to something stable in front of you. This could be a wall, this could be a pole, this could be a person, and this is going to assist you on the way up and down. Go as low as you can, hold this position for 30 seconds to a minute, and then use the stable surface to come back up. Over time, deepen the position until the hamstrings are touching the calves. If you need more assistance, you may even elevate the heels a bit here as well. Now, when and where should we squat? The answer is everywhere and every time. Take small chunks out of the day to squat for 30 seconds or two minutes. If you're waiting for the subway or the bus, squat down. If you're talking on the phone, squat down and talk. If you're working on the computer, take some time to squat. Integrate this into your life. This is one thing the 30-30 squat challenge brought to me and it can bring to you, making squatting a daily habit. Now I've been recording myself talking for about 15 minutes and I've been in the squat this entire time. I didn't start this way. I started with maybe 30 seconds and then burning in the front and this is very normal. Don't try to look at the end result, just look at learning something new, learning something that will help your body and something that you can use and share with those around you. I hope this video was useful to you and that you take this information and use it in your daily life. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Remember that this is episode one. We will have the second episode next week. Do not miss this episode. Make sure you are subscribed to the Tao Wei, and I will see you next week. That's the session. You have to put your, your heel at the end of the, the slant. That's easy for me. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> That's not fair either. <laughs>